Uh, it will provide a lot of value if that stays into play. Uh, but with Piper's four path, it's going to be uh, very likely that every time that comes into play, uh, Piper's going to want to remove that as quickly as possible. These players are shuffling up. This game is about to get underway. Both of these players have 19 match points. Piper is at a record of 6-2-1. Seb actually has a record of 5-0-4, oh, meaning that uh, he did not lose a match yesterday, but took four ties. Still equates to the correct amount of match points, being 19 to make it into day two. But that can just show you that these single prize decks sometimes take really long games. If you lose a long second game and you end up having to go to a game three, you don't always have enough time to finish a full match. Yeah, I was talking with some players yesterday and sort of asking them, how do you feel time is in this format? Because we've had a lot of sets where things feel very, very fast and very quick paced. And uh, I think Isaiah even mentioned it uh, on, in his interview last round. Right. He said, a lot of this format is time. You have to play fast. You have to scoop early. You have to know when you need to play, when you need to scoop. Uh, and when to pace yourself in these games. Uh, so it's sort of inevitable with a deck that takes a lot of actions every turn. You need to know how to sequence things, what cards to grab, what will get you to that eight or nine Rapid Strike cards in order to take a knockout. Uh, and sometimes it takes a little bit longer. You go to three games and there's nothing you can really do about that because inevitably you need to play long games to win. It's just it's how the game works. It can be how the game works. Scooping is a really important skill to have. Not a lot of players know when the time is, and it's always hard whenever you really feel like you still have a chance. You don't want to give up when you think there is even a slim opportunity for you to come back into a game, but sometimes it's what you really have to do. These prize cards are being placed out. An Inke there is never fun to see. A bunch of path to the peak. That could be good news for Seb. If uh, Turffield can stay in play for a long time, you can get a lot of value from uh, cycling that skip loom, like we mentioned. Yeah, 40 damage every turn. Nothing to scoff at. Uh, you're really going to be looking to try to hit those numbers every turn. But uh, normally in this matchup, it's pretty difficult for that turn to knock out on something like an Arceus uh, with a big charm or a very heavy H amount of HP. Uh, but can't stress this enough, it is Rapid Strike Malamar. This is a deck that can put things together out of nowhere, hit big numbers, uh, and things can get very, very scary. Uh, and yeah, Piper is running that big charm, so has access to that. But we're ready to get into game number one of day two. I'm so excited. We're kicking things off. It looks like an Arceus start. Um, a big advantage here for Piper going first. This means we're most likely going to see an Arceus VMAX or V Star, excuse me, turn two, which is going to be even harder for Seb to get that turn two knockout on potentially a 310 HP two prize Pokemon. Yeah, I almost wonder if the coin flip was slightly inconsequential here. I feel like a lot of times Malamar players choose to go second because that keep calling is so good, getting you up to three Rapid Strike Pokemon onto the bench right away. Arceus, of course, always wants to go first, get an energy drop so that you can threaten the turn to Trinity Nova. And Quick Ball grabs the Malamar V right away, puts it onto the bench, and Seb says, hey, let me, uh, I know I'm playing my own Malamar, but I need to get a read of this one. Yeah, attack's not too great. The second attack able to confuse the uh, active and drag off as the first attack is able to bring up a bench Pokemon and deal for a little bit of damage. But uh, if you're really in that spot, if you're Piper, it's not exactly where you want to be. But uh, getting that down right away wants to Again, get that VMAX, get that Evolved, and put this into play. Uh, looking over at Seb's list for Gust, there is none in there. Actually, no, it plays the one boss's order. So has that as the only Gust option. We saw uh, Joe Bernard for his regional list actually end up playing the Escape Rope, which sometimes can do almost the same thing as boss's orders to play around sort of a prize manipulation of maybe putting up a two prize Pokemon, then a three prize Pokemon, and then another three prize Pokemon to try to play that fabled eight prize game where you're taking eight prizes worth of cards. Again, you only need to knock out uh, enough Pokemon to take six prize cards, but sometimes you can play that route to force them to take more. But uh, importantly, gets the energy attachment turn one, gonna kick things off over to Seb with a level ball, grabbing that psychic energy. Keep calling is a great attack to start things off for Seb on turn number one. Love to see it. Also, going second means you can play a supporter card. I'm not sure if Seb had a Brawly in the hand. That's normally a great option on turn one because it can get you even more Rapid Strike Pokemon in play. I don't see it, but those Brawlies can still be useful later on in the game since those are Rapid Strike cards that boost your damage for the Rapid Strike Tentacles. It looks like we are going to see the Keep Calling. I assume this will grab two Inke because that is a very scary spot to be in if you're not going to have any Inke potentially because Definitely. Starbirth will almost always guarantee, right? You can find the double turbo energy and the boss's orders at any point. So it is the grab. Going to go ahead and get two Inke down and a Sobble also 
also have the Remoraid in hand. Yes. Octillery is a big card in this matchup, especially because your hand is going to be constantly disrupted. It can find yourself a Karina's Focus to draw cards. The energy you need, it is there to fill out pieces. So I have to imagine Piper's going to want to try to target that down as much as possible. But uh, here we go. We'll have to see what's in the hand. A nice top deck there. Looks like has the Ultra Ball off the top that can guarantee Pretty the good. Arceus V-Star and even potentially get rid of something. It looks like eyeing up maybe the Pump Kaboo to discard. Uh, but with so many Path already uh, in the prize cards, already had deck search to go ahead and check that through. I think Piper realizes, right, I want to keep that around because uh, even using that as a bench base, I don't need too much here. But the Arceus V-Star getting grabbed. Uh, and we may even see the Starbirth as soon as this turn. Yeah, Starbirth, such a good ability for the consistency of your setup in the early game. It can guarantee finding your double turbo energy. You can guarantee yourself getting a different Pokemon onto the bench to accelerate to with Trinity Nova. So whatever piece Piper feels like she's missing, she'll be able to grab out really quickly with the Starbirth. Absolutely. We do see that get grabbed off of the Ultra Ball. And I saw Marnie in hand as well. So, yep, nice we're going to go ahead and see that played. Putting the Pumpkin Boot at the bottom of the deck. Don't need that right now. There's no stadium to put into play. A great option as yeah. well. A good decision to play the supporter before using Starbirth because now you can see these five cards and then make your decision based on what you want to get with Starbirth. Evolution Incense likely can grab the Malamar VMAX. We also see Big Charm in that hand, a nice card to get. It's really difficult for Seb to get to eight Rapid Strike cards in hand on turn two in order to get a one-hit knockout. The Big Charm essentially forcing an extra card here off of that. Rapid Strike Tentacles needs eight now to take a knockout yeah. on a 310 HP Pokemon. It's almost like it is a three-prize VMAX Pokemon, but nope, only giving up two prize cards because of that V-Star. And that second Big Charm will be really important later on on the Malamar VMAX because that actually forces Seb to find nine Rapid Strike cards, boosting the Malamar all the way up well over 330, which uh, is that threshold in order to have the nine cards. Yep, perfect math there, though. The 310 HP plus the 40 there, it looks like. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we will have to see the exact math at this point. It looks like eyeing up... Definitely got that yeah, double turbo energy. Let's have it. So it looks like we will see those V-Star power get used is going to grab the double yep. turbo energy. Uh, and it looks like potentially a boss or a supporter for the following turn. But more importantly, is going to go ahead and use that Trinity Nova, take the knockout, and get those three dark energy onto that Malamar V-Max. Uh, this is going to be a big turn for Seb. Needs to stay in this race potentially by getting this knockout. It's not the end of the world uh, if there is a miss. But again, every turn you let this Arceus start to attack, uh, the harder it's going to be for you to climb yourself back into this game. Especially later on, we can see something like a boss's orders on something like the Remoraid after you have to go to a low hand size by putting those cards back in. And again, Max Jammer is great at disrupting and slowing the pace of the game down, putting the ball into Piper's court. Seb will have to see what the options are in this hand. I think has a few Rapid Strike cards. Is there a Cynthia's Ambition? That is really the big one you want to find, and I'm not sure that it's in there. No, we do see Karina's Focus at the minimum, so we'll be able to draw it back up, it looks like. It always feels cards. so bad to use your Karina's Focus yeah. to draw cards. I mean, you have to do it sometimes. It's how the deck works. You need to play that to draw cards, but it means it's one less Rapid Strike for you to deal more damage with later on in the game. Yeah, what was a four of almost always in this deck has all come down to maybe two or three copies at this point. Uh, two now here in Seb's list because of how powerful Cynthia is at just essentially being a better. I remember when this deck played uh, Bruno in there for yeah, draw power right. as, a, as a revenge mechanic card, right? If your Pokemon was knocked out, you could shuffle your head in and draw seven, but Cynthia is almost always better in every single circumstance. So uh, we do see the Karina fill the hand back up. A really interesting and, tech yeah. on Seb's side as well has that Oranguru from Sword and Shield base set with that Primate Wisdom ability, allowing you to swap a card in your hand with the top card of your deck once per turn. I think Seb's reason for playing that card in this list, in this, uh, you know, for this tournament is so that when you draw some of these cards that aren't Rapid Strike cards off of your Cynthia's Ambition in the late game, you can just swap it back into the deck and hopefully find something else. But it kind of becomes a catch-22 whenever you draw the Oranguru itself because it's also not a Rapid Strike card. And this hand is not looking very good for Seb at all. Has to sort of allow if this Primate Wisdom is actually going to thin the, uh, the Jump Bluff out, excuse me, the Skip Bloom out of the deck. It was it the Boss's like. Orders, I think, put it back on top. Yeah, put the Boss on back. And that is a nice top deck, though. It does find the Evolution Incense off of that Primate Wisdom, so we're most likely going to see that grab something like the Octillery to grab out some cards, uh, and from there maybe grab that Malamar to deal a little bit of damage to this Arceus V-Star mm. to then finish it off, potentially the following turn. Uh, no healing cards we see in this Arceus variant. Uh, we see a lot of times things going for a more consistent, I'm just going to be attacking with Arceus line, like to 
play that Sharon's care, but when you're usually just setting up this Arceus, understanding that I'm going to continue to trip Nova until I can't any longer, and then from there, going with something like the Malamar VMAX to finish off the rest of the game, uh, it doesn't really make sense to go in with a card. You'd rather be a lot more aggressive and find your resources, it seems. But I think uh, Piper's strategy in this game is definitely going to be to utilize one Arceus and then try to set up two Malamar VMAX, like you mentioned, forcing your opponent to play that eight prize card game. So it'll be on Piper this coming turn to find the replacement Malamar and start loading some energies up onto it. Yeah, and that's an excellent point about this list. There is no Inteleon line, so right. a lot of the times how things end up working is you try to go for that strategy, but because you have to play these Inteleon pieces down to evolve, that's where the one of boss's orders comes right. in to finish out a prizes. But there's no thing to boss up if you just right. only put down eight prizes worth of material on the board as the Rapid Strike Tentacles or Rapid Strike Search will go ahead and find the Rapid Strike Malabar. Now has that online, and it looks like we will see the Rapid Strike Tentacles deal 120 damage, three Rapid Strike cards shuffling back in. Wants to go ahead and put that Skip Bloom back in the deck to grab that for the following turn. Still a solid turn for Seb. You have to imagine at this point, this is exactly what Piper wanted. Not having that Arceus V-Star get knock, gets knocked out means that as long as another Malamar V comes down into play, from there, all you have to do is just announce attacking over and over again, and you should hopefully be able to put yourself in a nice position to close this game out. Piper does have that other Malamar V in the hand, so I'll be interested to see if Piper chooses to retreat this Arceus and start going in with the Max Jammer right away, or is it okay to take your time, let this Arceus take another hit next turn, or even potentially be KO'd, but with the benefit of being able to Trinity Nova and set up that other Malamar on the bench. Yeah, and a very smart play to point out there. Piper taking that opportunity to utilize that turf field stadium just to look through the deck again and say, how many copies of basic energy do I have to accelerate? Is there any more uh, in the deck? So just taking the opportunity to look through. Uh, even though there are no grass evolution Pokemon, the deck is private knowledge, so you can still look through that. And you uh, never know what yeah, you never know. Maybe there's a in there, yeah. <laughs> get the, the Flapple or something there to place two damage <laughs> counters or something. Sure. Got a Good. lot of things. And uh, we do actually, I think okay. we are going to see the boss's orders potentially target up this Octillery on the bench as we are going to see the retreat. That pretty much is going to nice. signal that at this point. And this is Very a solid play. play. Your opponent has three cards in hand. You're banking off the opportunity that there is no other two options as uh, it looks like yeah, we those are, are going the two to cards see... cards in hand. Oh, wow. And Intellion now gets put on the bottom of the deck, I believe, right? Does not get yeah. shuffled in. Put on the bottom of the deck. And Seb is left with just an ordinary rod that a Ranguru can provide a little extra draw, but that is... A tough situation to be in. Seb really hoping to top deck either a Drizzile or a Cynthia's. It's a Malamar. Yeah, it does still have that option to Primate Wisdom. Most likely that Ordinary Rod on top could also put that back into the deck. Uh, wants to recycle some of those pieces. Uh, but you usually want to use those for the Pokemon with over 90 HP so that you can utilize your Rescue Carrier to put those other Pokemon back. This is a big Primate Wisdom. What is the card off of this? Oh no, just boss the boss's orders. orders. And ah, this is spelling trouble here for Seb. If you're unable to put pressure on... Uh, you're going to be into a world of hurt. Can still deal some damage at least this turn uh, with the a 40 damage tentacles. poke. Yeah, it's maybe 80 bit. if you put that Malamar back as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not great. And on top of that, you also put more cards back into the deck that you can just draw into again uh, for the start of the turn that aren't going to benefit you. Is uh, it has to be your option. You have to put pressure on this turn at the worst. So uh, it looks like just eyeing up. Do I even want to do this? Do I even want to put myself in that position? Yeah, I, I think cards, Seb's yeah. debating. Do I evolve or do I do the extra damage here? And I like this decision. To to go ahead and evolve. Hitting for 40 is still setting up this Malamar to be knocked out at least a little easier. And you put that Malamar into play, so it's now not a card you have a chance of top decking on the next turn, since that's not an out to get you out of a uh, pretty tough start. Yeah, just the 40 damage there with the Rapid Strike Tentacles, and the Max Jammer will continue to disrupt Seb's hand. You're not putting really any incredible pieces on the bottom of the deck, but at the same time, it's still removing a card out of play. It's one less piece to work with, and more importantly, moving yourself closer and closer to winning this game, as there is the Evolution Incense, and that will guarantee uh, the second Malamar VMAX is in the deck, gets fan of the top, played into play. Yeah, Seb and, has uh, that boss's, awesome. boss's orders in hand, which I actually think is a card that uh, he'll be happy to see put on the bottom of the deck with Max Jammer, because it's not really going to be useful at this point in the game, not this early, but it could come up later. So having it put on the bottom, and then Seb is going to just be banking on between a top deck and a Primate Wisdom, can I find Cynthia's Ambition, or can I find a Drizzile to get out of this? Yeah, and then another point to note as well, the deck was shuffled after that, so the top card of not being, I believe, the Ordinary Rod that was put on top is no longer going to be the top deck, and we are going to see the Max Jammer take the knockout. The boss's orders will go to the bottom of the deck, and this is where you have to decide 
uh, what are my options? What are the odds of me drawing this? I think you have to play aggressively go. going with the Malamar. This card. Oh, the skip, skip loom. <sighs> One more chance. I mean, Wisdom, what is this card off the top? Has Drizzile to be Cynthia. Cynthia. Drizzile, that uh, works. Yeah. Okay. Very solid, very Evolution solid. Evolution Incense can grab the Drizzile. Seb can still play the game. And if Seb draws a bunch of Rapid Strike cards, we could theoretically see a KO this turn. But almost every single card off of the Cynthia's would have to be Rapid Strike card. And you still need to attach an energy for turn. Yeah, and just something to point out as we're going through this turn. Something really interesting that I haven't noticed yet about Seb's list is this Sobble Drizzile and Italian line is so wonky. It's four Sobble, two Drizzile, and a single copy of that Sword and Shield Italian. We see at least uh, almost all these engines at a minimum of three Drizzile. Mm -hmm. uh, so it usually makes sense. Oh, if you're going to play less Sobble, or less Drizzile, you play less Sobble, but since Sobble is still a Rapid Strike card, uh, there is that benefit to not only starting it to get that uh, Rapid Strike search, but also because, or excuse me, to keep calling, uh, but also throw it back in the deck with Rapid Strike Tentacles. Here we see the Cynthia's Ambition for a perfect eight cards, There's and there are a lot of Rapid Strike cards in this hand. This is looking pretty solid, but... Uh, but that Drizzile yeah. is not a Rapid Strike card, and that is the one piece here that would prevent Seb from getting this KO, I don't think it's possible. Scoop Up Net could pick up the Sobble, but that's still just one Rapid Strike card. I think Seb would miss this knockout here. And with Piper being at three prize cards remaining still, I think missing this KO this turn means that Piper should just be able to close the game out before Seb can take all of the prize cards to win. Yeah, I believe we'd have to play every single card to get there. 280 would be enough to take the knockout. I right. believe actually, seven enough rapid strike cards. Yeah, I, I don't see. It looks like everything in hand except for, oh yeah, the drizzle too. Yeah, the drizzle makes it six, right? So. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it tricks me a little bit around so Yeah, sometimes uh, those Drizziles look like Rapid Strike cards, but they're not. <laughs> no, they, they are no not Rapid Strike cards. how hard you cards. try to make it to be, it's, it's not a Rapid Strike card. It is not at all. And uh, I imagine Sev wishes that was one more card there just to go ahead and take that knockout. But uh, at this point, another turn of not taking a prize card means uh, Piper will go down to two prizes and from there, uh, as long as that Arceus is forced up to take the knockout, mm -hmm. uh, there is really a very slim chance that there is the ability to have eight cards in hand, or eight Rapid Strike cards in hand, uh, plus the boss's orders, take the knockout. After you've put so many yeah. cards already back in deck after a knockout, it is so unlikely, especially after you're continuously getting Max Jammer this turn. Uh, looks like considering what to put back into the... Deck. Ah. Evolution Incense yeah, can get that Sword and Shield Intellion. Drizzile guarantees that your opponent can get a Shady Dealings off. I think you have to get rid of that Incense because you don't want to give access to the Intellion. Chooses actually to get rid of the Scoop Up Net, which also makes sense. But now Seb, having access to Drizzile and Intellion, should have uh, the ability to set up pretty much any play that he wants to this coming turn. But going down to two prizes here, Piper is very much in the driver's seat. And also found that double turbo energy that turn, so yes. we'll guarantee the attack onto the Arceus. And things are spelling trouble. But you even see how close this technically can be if every number is achieved, right? If One turn away, essentially, if, if there's that three prizes, so to say. You knock out the Malamar, you knock out the Arceus, that's damage, and then from there, you have that one turn window to put together a crazy turn onto a Malamar VMAX. But Evolution Incense is a great way to start things off. You can find that Octillery, nice. and then Rapid Strike Search will be online to find any of those key pieces. And this is so great in this deck. Cannot stress it enough. It is not only an energy find, or a supporter find, or a Pokemon find to evolve your Pokemon, but it can always just be that extra 40 damage you need to just swing with that Rapid Strike Tentacles attack. Shady Dealings grabs the Cynthia's Ambition, the perfect card to play after your opponent took a KO, now filling the hand all the way up to eight cards. This card was so impactful for the Malamar deck after Brilliant Stars released. You got to remove that Bruno, which was just kind of a mediocre draw supporter, and now you get something much more powerful with the Cynthia. As we can see here, Seb drawing seven cards off the top. Yeah, so powerful. Reminds me of that Lily supporter card on turn one to fill the hand all the way back onto eight, except it works for every turn, not just your first turn. And there are a lot of options. Options. Rescue Carrier is a technically a plus one in the hand yep, because yep. it turns one card into two to put back in. Turf Field as well will guarantee the Skip Loom, uh, essentially a Rapid Strike card at this point in his hand. Uh, things are looking good. It's going to be pretty easy to get this stock out because it has already damaged 190 HP left, so we'll need seven Rapid Strike cards uh, in order to, to or excuse me, uh, we'll need five Rapid Strike cards in order to take this knockout. So it uh, looks like just considering what if I put down this play, what if I had the option to play, it looks like that both Drizziles, uh, or the other uh, on the right has come into play this 
turn, so has the option to utilize the Inteleon Shady Dealings, maybe combine that with a Scoop Up Net to then utilize that the following turn onto the other Drizzile. So uh, there are a lot of options, but again, things just seem pretty grim because Piper is already at two prize cards, yep. two knockouts away. Uh, game's going to come down to, uh, is there a miracle way that Seb has the way to one, knock out this, and then two, boss's orders plus eight cards. And then if there's a big charm, that comes into nine. And then from there, uh, it kind of just snows, snowballs yeah, out of proportion. It's looking pretty tough here for Seb. Maybe if Seb had the escape rope in deck, you could theoretically find a way back in. But even at that point, you just need so many cards to knock out these big HP VMAX Pokemon. Yeah, nice grab there off the Primate Wisdom. Or, yeah, Primate Wisdom does find the Rapid Strike Energy. So that is an extra 40 damage to go ahead and apply yep. uh, to this active. And now we have some options to work with. There's the level ball. Can go ahead and grab those Rapid Strike cards out of the deck. Also can still use Turf Field to get that Skip Loom mm -hmm. out. That's another plus 40. Yeah, so should have no problem getting the knockout here. But again, it just comes down to that following turn. What can you put together to take care of this Malamar VMAX on the bench? My intuition is saying, unfortunately, there's not much for Seb. Yeah, not looking great. You'll get these three prizes. Go down swinging. Move into game two with at least some of your dignity remaining. Ah, but uh, was there no level ball? Yeah, I was, there in the I was thinking. I think we may just have to grab the skip loom off there because there was one in the hand already off that draw from the Cynthia's Ambition. And two of those 90 HP or less Pokemon already prized. And yes, that's just going to go and scoop things up. We're going to go to game number two. Pretty convincing there for Piper. Uh, a pretty solid game for against Malamar, right? A 20 minute game number one. Uh, both these players need to win pretty much every single game. They have room for one tie, essentially. Uh, so they need to take these matches and win, especially when you're battling out from the bottom to get into top eight cut. Very well played by Piper. She did everything she needed to do, set up perfectly, got the turn to Trinity Nova, accelerated a bunch of energy to a benched Malamar V that was able to become the Malamar V Max. We saw the power of Max Jammer cutting Seb off of whatever resources he was trying to stack up in the hand access to things like the Drizzile, the Octillery, the Rapid Strike Surge, just cutting Seb off from those options is really what this deck aims to do with that powerful attack of Max Jammer. Yeah, I sometimes wonder, I, I really like this partner for Arceus Feaststar. It feels like a solid attacker. I feel the reason that Malamar VMAX wasn't seeing as much play before was because it was a a bit of a problem to power up. I know at the beginning of the format, some people were trying to put together this combination of cards where you use the Galarian Bolt Trace V, you Dire Flame Wings onto it, and then energy switch off of it and try to power right. up this Malamar VMAX, but it was a little clunky. It sort of was hard to get together. Uh, but now with the combination of Arceus V-Star being able to power up this Pokemon very easily, it allows Max Jammer to be a lot easier of an option for this deck. Malamar VMAX has always been one of the more powerful VMAX attackers. Just getting to the three energy has been the issue for it in the past. Arceus V-Star becoming a natural partner now, able to accelerate those energies as Seb is setting out the prize cards, that's a lot of search in the prizes. You don't ever love to see it. That Orangaroo in the prizes as well, kind of a key card Seb likes to utilize. Not too big of a deal to be prized, but it could be a little annoying. Yeah, at the end of the day, there's so many key pieces you need in this deck. You right. get six prize cards, you gotta take what you can get. Not the worst at any point. That Primate Wisdom is in the discard, or excuse me, in the prize cards. Uh, which was a big piece there at finding some things while it wasn't totally on point. So you see the prize cards there. Does prize a Malamar VMAX that is at the bottom of the prizes though, so we'll go ahead and take that with early knockouts. An interesting card we haven't pointed out is playing that Judge, which is a very nice card against the Mew VMAX decks to disrupt the Rotom phone stacking of the deck to Definitely. prevent them from putting something or guaranteeing a draw off of Marnie for a stadium to get rid of Path the Peak. Looks like we're kicking things off here to start game number two between Seb and Piper. Let's get into things. It uh, looks like just an attachment to the Crobat here in a pass. Oh, and this is a no. big start for Seb. Has the Brawly, and as long as there's an energy in hand, can fill this bench up. Crobat V, Crobat v can take an attack, uh, a knockout the following turn, technically. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's not what you want to be attacking with, especially because it is so fragile. Five Rapid Strike cards will take the knockout, but the ball is in Seb's court. Has that start going second. This is what we'll be seeing in this series. Uh, Seb wants to go ahead and utilize that Keep Calling attack. It's one of the few decks I feel in the standard format that says, hey, every time no matter what I'm against, I want to go second. I want to limit those options. Even against a deck like Mew VMAX that really wants to go first and get powered up, uh, Seb understands that I, I still want to do my thing. I want to get set up. And this is perfect here. Has the keep calling, has the brawly, has everything set up. This is an excellent start here for Seb. 
eyes up a second Remoraid as opposed to another Sobble, which is a little interesting, but I guess we have to remember Seb only plays two Drizzile in the list. So uh, I guess with Scoop of Nets, you could have made a third Drizzile theoretically next turn, but wants to value getting the Remoraid, especially after Seb saw how Piper was so aggressive after bosses ordering the Remoraid and Octillery in the first game. Yeah, and something to note out too, Rapid Strike Search is limited to one Rapid That's Strike right, Search yeah. ability per turn. So uh, for those who are at home, oh, he can just set two out and search every time. It is capped. And I do like that. I feel like that would be a little bit over overzealous if it was uh, over one of those Rapid Strike Searches. But a uh, very nice top deck there for Piper. I assume would have played the uh, Quick Ball to grab an Arceus turn one if that wasn't the hand. Definitely. So uh, can at least get it down now. Not out of it yet, right? Things happen for this Malamar deck. We saw how Max Jammer was impactful as well as poor draws on Seb's side in game one. So don't count Piper out yet. There's still a lot of Pokemon to be played in this game number two. Exactly what you want to see. We'll have to see if there's a supporter to back things up. Wouldn't have been able to play it on that first turn. But I have to imagine with so many unplayable cards, so to say, just attaching a pass to the Crobat, there's got to be something there. Yeah, maybe a supporter, maybe a Marnie, Judge, any of these options would be great. And there is a Marnie. Piper also had an Evolution Incense in hand. So putting that on the bottom feels a little bad because that's one of your outs, Darkius V-Star. But it also feels pretty good to play a Marnie in C5 fresh cards. Absolutely. We'll have to see what the grab is. Very nice. Has the double turbo energy and the ultra ball for the following Very turn. Good to go ahead and find that Arceus V-Star. And a Malamar. Uh, and the Malamar as well. And uh, I think may have to hold that Arceus V to be able to pitch it the following turn uh, because Big Charm and Double Turbo, it looks like, are the last two cards in hand, and you really want those in this matchup. But Seb starting things off, and this is a pretty solid hand to get things. Could thin a little bit. Uh, has the pivoting option, either with the Manual Retreat or the Scoop Up that to reuse that Drizzile. Uh, so a very nice card. It's exactly what you want to find here off of this Marnie. Seb could get a KO this turn, would need to set up a Malamar and get five Rapid Strike cards to the hand. I don't think that the pieces are quite there for Seb right now. Would need to find an Octillery, I think, to get a Karina's Focus. Cynthia's Ambition only drawing you five. It feels really bad to utilize that powerful supporter card in an instance like this. So it would probably have to be Karina's as the supporter option for turn. Yeah, it looks like has the Karina's focus in hand already. So oh, is that uh, a Karina's yeah, card? all the way on the left there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So has the Karina already. So this Drizzile can most likely find an evolution and since has a scoop up net to reuse it again this turn. Uh, so things are looking pretty solid. You want to get that rapid strike search out as soon as possible. The earlier you get into play, it's sort of like we were talking yesterday about the barrel. And the card is so great because the earlier you get into play, the more value you get out of it. The more cards you are going to be drawing, the more cards you're going to be finding. As we are going to see uh, the artillery get played, we may even see the Rapid Strike Search get played now. That, that is an interesting point with sequencing. You, do you hold off and, and use that ability now, or do you maybe wait until after to see exactly what you need? Yeah, I think you use your supporter first, because if you draw into a Malamar, that means that your Rapid Strike Search can get you something else. And if you whiff a Malamar, you can still use Rapid Strike Search to go get it. Oh, wow, looks like Drew into our three non-Rapid Strike cards in that hand. So things could get pretty dicey, and no Malamar either. So still needs to find the Malamar, and you already have the pivot, but yeah, look, look at that. Banning the three cards outside. I what think can Seb I can get there, but would have to scoop up net the Octillery and put both of those cards yeah. into hand, which isn't too big of a... Oh, no, it's actually still short. Yeah, only two Rapid Strike cards in addition to that scoop up net. So I think is one card short of getting this KO. That is a really unfortunate whiff. This could have been a big opening. Yeah, just If he had the Malamar VMAX, or excuse me, the Malamar off of that, uh, the Rapid Strike Search would have been able to find the fifth card, but because you have to find out, you have to find the Malamar off of this Rapid Strike Search. Yeah, but by using your Karina's yeah. first, you, you're, you're leaving more Rapid Strike Oh, no, I, I think that's back. correct. Yeah. yeah, I definitely just think it's didn't correct. Work it's out just unlucky, instance. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. unfortunate. Yeah, very unlucky indeed. There's so many search options for it as well. You have the Evolution in Sense. Uh, and now you have to question, that. is it even worth hitting into this active Crobat? And I think the answer is no. I would almost rather just manually retreat into something like the Remoraid this turn and pass it over potentially. Something you do like to do with Malamar, of course, is put these cards back into the deck so your Cynthia's Ambitions find you more cards on following turns. But... It, it, you're losing a Malamar if you do that, and you're not getting the most value out of it. Yeah, and this is a very interesting line. Doesn't have the pieces right now to get the knockout. Even with a scoop up net, you are 20 damage short of taking this knockout. So uh, this is where things are going to get tricky here for Seb. What line do you want to make? 
uh, what do you even play at this point? But it looks like maybe valuing a uh, like a weird late KO potentially. But yeah, by putting some damage on the Crobat, it does make it easier to KO later with the boss's orders. So I can understand this. Seb's just gonna have to find a lot this coming turn. It needs a Malamar and energy, and you know, Cynthia's ambition can d certainly find a lot of cards. So that'll be nice. It essentially makes it so that Piper didn't have that awkward start to turn one. It kind of just goes back to that situation where in this matchup, Piper should always be taking the first prize card because you're going first, you're attaching, your opponent is using key calling and then you're using Trinity Nova to attach some energies so ideally yeah. yeah essentially that's what you want to do at this point as it looks like the choice belt was the top deck go ahead and pitch that away there's no Not e Pokemon uh, to go ahead and swing into for some more damage and I'm almost certain we are going to be seeing that V star power star birth V star gonna go ahead and find any two cards out of the deck almost certain we're gonna see that double turbo energy and potentially a supporter card uh, like a Marnie or a research to draw through the deck there are a lot of awesome options to look at Plenty of choices here. Definitely needs to guarantee an energy. I think that was in the hand, oh, if correct. I'm not yep. mistaken. So uh, eyeing up a Malamar VMAX, getting that evolution in play feels nice. A big charm could be a good grab. A supporter card. There's not been a supporter played this turn yet, so a research to ditch the hand seems like a good option as well. Or a Marnie to disrupt what Seb has going on. And we actually know Seb has two Cynthia's Ambition there in that hand. Yeah, look at that perfect two cards in hand. It has the big charm and the double turbo before nice. the star birth. And it looks like it will be the evolution in sense, and the Marnie looks like grabbed off of that Star Birth V Star power. It's gonna go ahead and grab that Malamar V Max with that Max Jammer. Gonna be online the next turn. Crobat already able to retreat out of the active, so that is sort of the, the advantage, right? Already has the energy, does not have to use One retreat uh, a switching card. So uh, this is gonna be pretty important here to see as we are getting into the thing, uh, the heat of things, excuse me. First knockout, now we get into the, the middle of the game of knockout into knockout into disruption, and there we go. We're going to see the Marnie get played. Uh, Seb can't be too upset about that. There were a few cards. There were, like, multiple Cynthia's ambitions, so we'll need to now search some of those out of the deck again. Uh, but you are now giving yourself potentially more options to only have Rapid Strike cards in hand to put together uh, a nice knockout. But it's going to be hard. Needs eight Rapid Strike cards coming up into this turn. Uh, but until now, we are going to see this Arceus V-Star come up. There's the Trinity Nova taking the knockout. We're nice. going to see three Dark Energy put on to that Malamar VMAX. We'll have to see what prize is taken here, but I have to imagine at this point, Piper excited to take that first prize card, put herself into the spot uh, to pace out this game, map everything out, and hopefully close things out. Yeah, Piper will definitely need to find that other Malamar at some point. It looks like it's at the bottom of the prizes, so... So hopefully should find it pretty soon. Great to take the first KO. That's kind of how things should go. We mentioned that in this matchup, right, with... The Arceus deck versus the Rapid Strike Malamar, since you're trying to Trinity Nova as quickly as possible, and Malamar takes quite a bit longer to get set up. Yeah, definitely a longer deck to put together those combo pieces to get the knockouts. And Eight cards off of Cynthia. Yeah, this is a nice Cynthia's ambition. A lot of Rapid Strike cards. Does have that boss's orders, which you really don't want to see until later on in the game to put something together. But the hand is looking solid. Fog Crystal can find the Inke for the following turn, does need to get that down. Uh, that is an important piece to find. And has to use the Spiral Energy as the energy attachment for turn, most likely, since the Fog Crystal needs to find a replacement Inke, which is a little unfortunate. You obviously have to attach an energy, so you don't hate to see it in your hand, but it is a Rapid Strike card, so now your Rapid Strike Tentacles will do less damage. I guess Seb could get a basic energy here and then use Rapid Strike Search to get an Inke. That is technically an option. Hey, yeah, the more I'm looking at this hand, I don't think it is possible to get this knockout onto the Arceus V-Star. We'll have to go for that two-hit knockout. Yeah, it's so hard yeah, to KO these big uh, Arceuses this early on in the game. Mm -hmm. Especially on turn two, where it is uh, turn three at this point now, where uh, it's a lot difficult. Sort of was a, a weird start to the game, right? right? Both players weren't really doing exactly what It feels what they like wanted. it's turn two, even though yeah, it's yeah, turn yeah. three, just because the, the little bit of the whiff there on that first KO from Seb. Yeah, it looks like just going to prioritize dealing some damage to this Arceus V-Star to finish it off. And this is kind of how game number one went as well. Slow way to knock out this Arceus V-Star. And then kind of Malamar came in to deal a lot of damage uh, and put some pressure on. So uh, we are at minimum going to see the Rapid Strike Search grab that Malamar out of the deck. Don't believe there is any way to search that out at the time being. So uh, we'll have to go ahead and grab that, it looks like. So uh, we are going into... Yep, there we go. Malamar going to go and get grabbed put into the hand that is going to get evolved onto the active and 
Uh, looks like going to be able to maybe deal around 120 damage. Does still have that turf field in hand, but may want to save that to guarantee uh, the skip bloom for the following turn in case something like the Malamar comes out where he needs to hit bigger damage. But no, just going to go ahead and play it down now. I think this is fine. You deal some damage to the active as it is, and if it doesn't get boomed, you, your value, this team gets a lot more value for getting into play. Yeah, I think uh, it's, in play. it's good to just put it in play whenever you know you're going to get some damage out of the skip bloom because. There's always the chance it sticks around, and if it does, that means you'll be dealing more damage turn after turn after turn. So that's really what you want to do and how you get the most value out of playing this card. Yeah, absolutely. Looks like just eyeing up the hand has the skip loom now, and it looks like we are going to potentially see this deal 120 damage. I see there is the skip loom, the Sobble, and it looks like a Brawly in hand there for Seb. Seb debating, yeah, playing a, debating playing a, a Karina, Karina. net here. Whether or not they want to do that, I'm not sure. Yeah, you usually want to use these once you evolve fully up into the Intellion, right, mm -hmm. to get that full value. But, yeah, we are just going to see 120 damage get dealt to this Arceus V-Star. Not shabby whatsoever. Uh, puts it at 190, so five Rapid Strike cards will go ahead and take the knockout on it the following turn. And I'm uh, going to go and shuffle those back in. And this is kind of a position where you're always putting yourself to a low hand size. You technically have the guaranteed supporter in Karina with Octillery, but we saw in game one, he picked that off right with the boss's orders, and it's not guaranteed now, and you get to disrupt that card. We'll have to see if that is the same route that goes for us. We're actually going to see the Arceus V come down and get attached to it, so no Malamar coming down. All the signals, maybe a poor hand here from Piper, or maybe just a lack of options. I think, is that an Ultra Ball there? I see a the... Sun and Moon switch. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's the switch. So is actually going to go for this route. Go for the Max Jammer still. Mm -hmm. Save that energy on the active. It's not too ba big of a deal to retreat it off, but Ooh. let's have the Judge. The Judge there coming out uh, is going to go ahead. Yeah, and... Seb just started shuffling the hand. We're so used to uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, disruption yeah, yeah. supporter being Marnie. But no, you got to shuffle all of your cards into your deck, and then you draw four cards each player. Yeah, and this is nice, again, against specific other decks, but uh, it is essentially a similar disruption. You're getting the same amount of cards for Marnie, uh, except those cards are shuffled back in, so there's the chance that you redraw back into them. A card we saw a while ago, I think the most recently in the meta, with that Pikachu Judge, or the Judge's Courtroom deck, yeah. as some have called it, but uh, it was used as a nice disruption tool. So we've also seen that effect on other cards, like the Marshadow from Shining Legends as well. Uh, there's, there have been a lot of options. As Here we go, Ooh, Max Jammer. Oh, no, this is a... Uh... A pretty tough hand to see from Seb. I guess has the replacement Inke and the energy, but Rescue Carrier this early isn't the best. Karina's focus is going to get popped onto the bottom of the deck. You can obviously just grab it back with the Rapid Strike Search, but it's going to be tough for Seb to find a KO on this Arceus, even with it already being so heavily damaged. Oh, wait, no, it's the Malamar in the active now, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's just no shot this is getting KO'd. Yeah, it's going to kind of be this set up for two shots, but that just gives the Piper even more time to work for these knockouts. Does have the Rescue Carrier. I'm not sure if there are two Rapid Strike Pokemon in the discard pile, uh, but essentially... Or maybe yeah. the Inke. No, there's an Inke and a Sobble. That's there is an Inke and a Sobble, yeah. So uh, we'll be able to at least get a plus one off of that. And Piper understanding, at least I guarantee that you use your Rapid Strike Search to find that supporter card uh, instead of going for something else. Yeah, uh, getting your yeah. Malamar. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Good options here, though. Has to get the NK down every turn to be able to string attacks together. So it is one less Rapid Strike card. And uh, essentially has three Rapid Strike cards already in the hand. So it's going to draw up to six. Shady Dealings has a potential to get a plus one. So there are still some options to work with. Has already used Rapid Strike. And ooh, finds a lot of scoop up net. But there's nothing really that you no want Malamar to put in. No Malamar out. No Malamar out. Oh, wow. And no Malamar out it's either. The, it's to scoop up net the Drizzile to get a Malamar. And that's the only way you can get one this turn. And yeah. you're just not even going to be doing that much damage, it seems like. No, it's the same sort of set up for a two-hit knockout, and at that point, it's... But is it even setting up for a two-hit knockout if you're dealing 80 damage? Because that's what we're talking about here for Seb. It's not looking like much is going to be able to happen. Yeah, you can do 120 with the Rescue Carrier, so a yeah, yeah. little bit more. You'd leave it at 190. That's five, and then a big charm makes it six Rapid Strike cards you would need at that point, so... Uh, with this onslaught of Max difficult. Jammer, it becomes mm -hmm. more and more difficult every single turn to find these KOs. Yeah, one less Rapid Strike card can make the difference. I, I've played tons of matches online where I'm like, oh, 320, but I'm, I'm one short because yeah. I, I don't have the Rapid Strike card. So one card can make or break a game in the Pokemon trading card game. It all counts. It all matters. And uh, we're seeing how much it is mattering here for Seb. 
Uh, looks like going to eye up the ordinary rod here off of this shady dealings. Okay. So we could potentially just see uh, the Inke sit in the active and take a more passive route of trying to just bring back these resources this turn. But again, you're just going to be put in the same dilemma you were to start this turn of taking down this massive 310, potentially 340 HP Malamar VMAX. Seb does need to get Malamars back into the deck because one is prized. So there's only three in the deck right now until Seb eventually takes that prize card. So using the Ordinary Rod to put two back makes it more likely in the future turns you'll be able to find one. Absolutely. It's unfortunate to see those prized, but... You but now by using the Shady Dealings to get Ordinary Rod, Seb is guaranteed that there won't be an attack this turn. Yeah, you can use the... You can even do 20 damage. Rapid Spin or the Spinning, <laughs> spinning turn. Spinning Attack, I believe. Spinning Attack. Yeah, it looks like we are going to see the 20 damage done from the Spinning Attack on the Inke. Uh, it's technically, I think, one less Rapid Strike card with how math, with how math works. So mm. it is technically like you were using uh, a single card off of Rapid Strike Tentacles, but not what you want to see at all. It's still going to be... Yeah, it is a relevant 20 damage, mm. but uh, it still is a lot of cards you're going to need in the future turns. Yeah, and this also means Piper will go down to three prizes without a single Pokemon being knocked out on yep. her side. As we do see the second Arceus V-Star get evolved. That's exactly what you want to see. Maybe potentially down the down the line we'll see another Malamar get evolved. But this is a nice grab here. Looks like yep. the Inteleon was in hand. That back for That's 100% sure. going on the bottom of the deck. As uh, it looks like we will see the Inke promoted. And a very nice, nice top deck there. Yes, finds the Cynthia's Ambition, can fill this hand up. Has the attachment and the evolution already because of that fog crystal. This is a good and, uh, hand here yeah, for look at Seb. That. We'll shuffle the deck as well after this fog crystal search. Gets the basic energy, and now that Intellion is no longer on the bottom of the deck. So Seb has the ability to potentially draw into that, and Shady Dealings can get any two trainers out of the deck, which usually just means two more Rapid Strike cards to hand. We could definitely see a big VMAX KO. And this is interesting to establish double Octillery, but it makes more sense when I'm thinking about it. You give yourself more protection against a boss's orders onto an Octillery in combination with a Max Jammer, so you can consistently find your pieces. But again, that's one less Rapid Strike card Seb is going to have access to because you have to play around that option, around that line. And these are big cards. Seb needs to have eight <sighs> Rapid Strike cards in hand in order to get this KO, and this hand is just full of non-Rapid Strike cards. No, keeps finding the boss's orders. It, it seems feels like when you're time. playing Malamar, it's this one-of card that you need in certain niche scenarios. When you're playing this deck, though, it feels like you just are constantly drawing the boss's orders at the wrong time. It looks like has to utilize this Drizzile to find potentially a rescue carrier to get a plus one. Mm -hmm. I don't know, again, if there are enough cards needs to find enough to get this knock out will need to be... Between the scoop-up yeah. nets, that's a couple plus twos because there's two auxiliaries in play, or a plus ones, I should say. I think we actually could see this KO. There, there are so many, with the, with the double Octillery being in play, that actually makes a big difference because that's a couple more Rapid Strike cards to the hand. And the more I'm thinking about this math, I actually don't know how relevant it is in this situation because seven Rapid Strike cards would put it at 280 plus the 20 would mean that it no, is No, you need 10. to get to the eight still because that's 310 base. Oh, uh, correct. Yeah, yeah the yeah, 20 yeah. damage is relevant if the Malamar VMAX If it has a, the a big charm, charm correct. Right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but as of right now, for this turn, uh, it's gonna it's gotta hurt again to not have any damage on there. Uh, but set play a little fast here, so I think there may be the cards there to get it. The rescue carrier will be plus one into hand. The stadium will be able to grab the skip loom, and we'll have to see if there are eight cards. Also has to again bench the inke yep, down, so inkay. it's one less every single turn. There's the skip loom, so uh, we'll have to see off of that. Played a lot of these shady dealings to get these cards, so I have to assume it's there. And well, I mean, it has the scoop up net, it but that's eight. even. Yeah, so there, that'll add plus one card to hand. You get two Rapid Strike cards. You're losing a scoop of net, so plus one card to hand. I see seven right Mr. there. Brawley, that's one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And, uh, one more scoop of net should do it, I think. Yeah, we'd have to scoop up net and maybe hold the Sobble and... Yeah, I think you yeah. just have to, you have to get this KO, right? Oh, yeah, no oh, Rapid Strike Search. Rapid Strike Search. Wow, okay. yeah. Yeah, it feels like that turn was so long, but <laughs> there's so many different abilities, so many different deck searches mm -hmm. that have to happen. Rapid Strike Search still being online, and that is excellent because now Seb is able to save the scoop up net to reset Intellion on the next turn, potentially. Yeah, you have to wonder. Technically, if you use it here, you give yourself the option to use two Shady Dealings the following turn. But again, uh, we could see something like a... Uh, and that's what Seb action, chooses yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very smart play there. Going to go ahead and do that. Pick it back up. Uh, and this is kind of where, I mean, I don't know the exact counts. I don't know if there is another Inke there. I think there is still one more in this card. And 
Yeah, and they're just going to go ahead and burn the Fog Crystal. It doesn't want to draw into that potentially off of another Judge or another card that he doesn't want to see. Uh, understands that there are potentially t multiple copies of that Judge in the deck and is going to elect to bench that Sobbles. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Rapid Strike cards. That's enough to take the knockout onto Malamar VMAX. Seb going to go ahead and even things up here at three prizes apiece and will draw into a good amount of those search cards, but not the actual Rapid Strike cards he would like to find off those prize cards. Yeah, still good to, get good to get those search cards, especially if Piper could combo like a Judge or a Marnie this coming turn, which we know that she plays so many of those disruption cards. Seb was able to find the Malamar off the prizes, which is definitely key. Yeah, to take that left prize card, so he's going to go ahead nice. and find one of those prizes. Nice 50-50 there you take, and uh, it's going to pay off there for Seb. Wants that for the following turn to attack with that Inke. And things are still possible, but it really is going to come down to this turn. Can you take a knockout onto this Arceus V-Star? Otherwise, it's simple and lined up for Piper. You don't have any three-prize Pokemon in play. Your opponent needs to take two more knockouts. And this is where things get difficult, oh. especially when oh. you're going to pick off that Drizzile. That's going to be even less options for your opponent, especially when you know they already have that Shady Dealings and Teleon in hand. And there it is. The Trinity Nova going to go ahead and take the knockout. Can even accelerate some energies onto this Crobat V to maybe take a low HP knockout on something like an Inke or Sopple on the bench. Yeah, can even knock out Malamar because Malamar is weak to mm -hmm. darkness, right? So Venomous Vang can get in there to close out the game potentially, though. If Seb misses a KO here, Piper's going down to just two prize cards remaining, and then Piper's going to be in a great spot to close this out. Yeah, absolutely. So it, 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 it's this turn. Seb needs to find a knockout this turn in order to stay in this game. If Seb misses this KO, Piper should have things lined up to close it out. He absolutely has the Pokemon on board to knock out anything in Seb's deck with damage reduction or anything regardless. His level ball is going to start things out. We might see Sobble. this grab something like a... Got the oh. Sobble there. I have to imagine, is there already uh, enough in hand here, potentially, off this? There's already a lot of Rapid Strike cards. There's a pretty cards. sizable hand from Seb, and Piper did not use Max Jammer last turn, so nothing got disrupted. Yeah, it looks like Shady Dealings could potentially grab the uh, potentially last or second to last Cynthia's Ambition in the deck to fill that hand back up to eight. There's already a lot of cards you really want to be using that when you have put your hand down to one or two cards after a big knockout with Rapid Strike Tentacles, as it looks like that was uh, just another Rapid Strike Brawly card. grabbed. Brawly, so yeah. are there eight in this hand here? Oh, boss's orders. There's enough to at least take this KO. And now Seb, by only needing four uh, cards to get this knockout is setting up to be able to just go for a big one-hit knockout on the Arceus next turn. And this is a smart play as well to grab that yeah, Sobble yeah. off the level ball to set up again the following turn, put yourself in essentially the same situation of I want to Intelli on the turn after. And the Rapid Strike Search also going to go ahead uh, and it looks like grab the Brawly out of the deck it seems. So has that option. It looks like is now going to eye up the Remoraid off of the level ball. And yeah, there's definitely enough Rapid Strike cards there. Already has the Inke for the following turn. So this is where things are going to get interesting as we get into the end game. So you're essentially prolonging the knockout you need on a low HP target for what would be the following turn if you took the knockout onto the big V-Star mm -hmm. and trying to say next turn I'm going to put together a crazy combination of cards to deal that 310 damage. Eight Rapid Strike cards going to be needed. But for now, there's Rapid Strike Tentacles. A big grab there. Finds another Rapid Strike card off the nice. prizes. It's going to make it even easier to get there, especially with a pretty thin deck of almost all Rapid Strike cards or at least ways to get Rapid Strike cards back into your hand. Uh, Piper here is a pretty streamlined way of looking at this. There's not much else you can do. You got to leave your highest HP target in the active. You know your opponent's boss's orders is gone. No reveal on something else like an escape rope down into play. Anything quirky or interesting like that. So uh, it looks play like the judge. yeah, that is a big time judge. Yeah, so. that was a pretty sizable hand from Seb. And Piper knew that Seb still had that Intellion in the hand, which is key to put back into the deck. Both players will get four cards. And it'll just be up to these four from Seb. Can Seb find a Cynthia's ambition to get through the deck and get? Eight Rapid Strike cards to the hand. It is a lot to ask for, but through the power of Shady Dealings and Rapid Strike Search, it is certainly possible. It's going to be close here, Ethan. Yeah, and we're coming down on four minutes here in the yeah. round. So Seb, at the best here, it seems, can force a tie in this game. Piper wants that match point. I think, don't think either of these players want a tie, but if you're in Seb's position, you'd obviously, obviously take that over a loss. Certainly. 
Couldn't quite see the four cards. We'll have a little bit of a surprise here as we start things out. Uh, Piper's just gonna go ahead and just bench some Pokemon down. Knows that it doesn't yeah, really matter. Yeah, that boss matter. is gone from seven. Yeah, boss is down. There's the knockout. We'll see what Step has to work with. Has a few cards. It looks like already has the evolution incense. Nice. So still needs to find the energy. Uh, both pieces aren't guaranteed yet, but we could just see this. Go ahead and grab a piece. It looks like Drizzile potentially off the top of the deck. It looks like for Seb. And there's the evolution incense. So right off the bat, just eyeing things up. Still has some spiral energy left in deck. Yep. Has Needs that an option. Energy. Needs an energy. One Cynthia's ambition in there, the too. Malamar. Okay, so the Malamar, I think, was drawn, which is good. Mm -hmm. Evolution Incense can get this Intellion. Yeah, so here we go. Looks like just going to eye up what options there are. If there's still a Rescue Carrier in the deck, it looks like there are two 90 oh, HP the Pokemon discard there. Pile. Oh, yeah, the, uh, in, the, in the discard pile for Rescue Carrier to, to put back in there. Yeah, yeah so... Uh, it looks like we are going to see the Evolution Incense grab that Inteleon, and I'm most likely going to see that Cynthia's Ambition grab, as well as potentially something like a Scoop Up Net or another Rapid Strike card uh, to put into the hand, or even that Rescue, Rescue Carrier, Carrier to yep. be a plus one. The second card does have two copies in this mm -hmm. list, so playing two, coming in clutch. Yes, yeah, so there is going to be a lot of options, but I think just looking through the deck, doesn't have access, I don't think, to another turf field to necessarily search out that jump bluff, but it's, if you draw into it, it's essentially the same thing, right, as finding that out of the deck. So uh, just eyeing up the second piece that is best. So I like either the scoop up net, right, or the rescue carrier for this play, but uh, it's going to come down to these big, this is going to be big eight cards here, uh, or fill up to eight, rather, off the of Cynthia. Yeah, it's a little awkward that you're having to use the Intellion before using Cynthia's. I feel like that's something you would love to draw into after using Cynthia because you're putting one more card in your hand, meaning that's one less you would draw from a Cynthia's Ambition. Yeah, so it looks like five cards can be drawn here off of the Cynthia's Ambition. Just checking, 310 HP, so eight Rapid Strike cards are needed for this knockout. Here we go, this Drawing is going to be big. Oh, four cards here, so one less card than I thought. Here we go, filling the hand up to eight. Going to need to find a lot of Rapid Strike cards. Still has access to Rapid Strike Search. There's the Rescue Carrier. That's big, and I think that could be the piece Seb needed in order to get to the eight cards. Yeah. Rapid Strike Tentacles still has not been used. Or excuse me, the Rapid Strike Search does eye up the Spiral Energy. Can throw that to the active, and Rescue Carrier gets back to Scoop Up Net, gets back to the Octillery. I'm pretty sure Seb has the pieces here. Yeah, it looks like there it is. Going to be able to grab two of those 90 HP or less Pokemon, put them into the hand. The scoop up net can go in and pick up the Octillery. That's at minimum a plus one. And there you go. Picks it up yeah. and has plenty of cards. One, two, three, four, five. More than six, enough. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine Rapid Strike cards. Going to be able to take the knockout. We're going to a game number three here. I don't think there's enough time to finish things out, but Seb's got to feel good. You at least squeak out a match point. It is technically possible to finish in the top eight if you win out the rest of your matches. But if you're Seb, you got to feel good to at least pull that one out in game two. Yeah, very nice win by Seb. Tough start from Piper. Didn't quite get the exact game plan she would have liked. Was a little slow getting things going. Didn't get the turn one energy attachment to Arceus. About a minute left in this round. So pretty much the only way either of these players is going to win this game is if the other one opens up with no other basic Pokemon search and you can get a quick, easy knockout on just one Pokemon in play, which is always an unfortunate way to lose a game, but it can happen. Yeah, we haven't seen any draws on stream yet, so this this potentially could be our first draw of the entire day. So. It could be. Uh, we haven't really seen this at all. Uh, interestingly to note, though, we saw how this deck really functioned at the end game when you have access to all of those pieces, and when your deck is slowly being thinned out of cards that aren't Rapid Strike cards, when you're drawing these Cynthia's Ambitions, you're not drawing into maybe seven or eight cards like you usually will, but all those cards are Rapid Strike cards, and especially with Rapid Strike Search to find that last key piece, right? That Rapid Strike Energy, or the Malamar, as we saw in that case. You kind of just have it. You have eight or nine cards you need to take a knockout, and there's not really anything more than 340 HP in the game. So Nine's going to go ahead and close it out on pretty much everything. Yep. So really, at this point, Seb's win condition, or I guess I should say not lose condition, is just going to be to get a bunch of Pokemon in play. It's unlikely that Piper would get KO'd with no other Pokemon around because her Pokemon have so much more HP, but... Nothing too big in the prize. I guess two Cynthia's Ambition is not great to see on Seb's side, though I don't know that this game will go long enough for that to matter. Both Big Charm in Piper's prizes is certainly not great. Yeah, it's uh, another Crobat start here, unfortunately, to get things going. But we're jumping into game number three. Not much time left, but we'll go ahead and throw it down to these players as we get things under wraps. Able to go ahead and start things off. Quick balling, going to be able to grab that Arceus V. As uh, If you're Piper here, 
this is pretty much an unlosable situation now that you have multiple Pokemon into play. Uh, but things could still be scary. We'll see if there's a Sobble start. No, it's a Remoraid, so things could get a little bit dicey. I'm trying to see this hand here. There is a Fog Crystal. There's a Ooh, Fog Crystal. There's, so. ah, there's not but really not much, much else, else, though. No. I mean, if this Remoraid stay, survives, right, if it does not get knocked out, there is the potential for a Octillery to come into play to then grab some other cards. But uh, we are just going to see very quick play, attaching the energy to the Arceus, passing okay, things two, over. Two Fog Crystals should mean that Seb can just get two basic Pokemon in. Correct, yeah. I believe that we are in turn. So I believe mm -hmm. Piper should have been turn one there. Usually, if so it's a little weird. If time is called yeah. between games, Two and three. Nobody is turn zero. No right, one yeah. is turn zero, right? Turn zero exists for the current player to be able to finish out their turn. So Piper should have been turn one to start this game off. Seb will be turn two here. And just by benching all these Pokemon, there's just no way Piper can. Uh, even if Piper was, even if time hasn't been called and like Seb becomes turn zero right now, Piper can't take these three KOs in order to close out the game. And Seb can't take three KOs to close out the game. So this should just be a tie. Yeah, you kind of see it in their body language, too, playing pretty fast, just grabbing yeah, They, they the understand back. the situation here. Yeah, and obviously neither of these players wants a tie, but it is better than a loss. It will still put you one point closer to that top eight slot. Could have been uh, a time extension or something like that as well here, because we're still playing pretty quickly. And no, nope, yeah, it looks like it is just going to be a tie. Yeah. Unfortunate way to see that match end because we saw a really great one, uh, game one from Piper where everything really went well her way and a great well-fought hard game two from Seb where he was able to come back and find a way to win a game from a, a pretty tough looking start on both players' sides. And it's just unfortunate to see a match end in a tie, but both of these players will still be in contention for top eight. Is going to have to win out, though, in order to make that happen. Yeah, the Battle of the Malamars has no victor. It, it is a draw, a stalemate. It so. is still undecided which <laughs> Malamar is the better squid. Yeah, I think we'll have to play some more games of that. Hopefully we maybe see this again on stream, maybe potentially so. in top eight. It's still possible for both these players if they can win the rest of the remaining four Swiss rounds. But uh, Ty, nothing to scoff at. You still are one point closer to that top eight. Uh, but again, it's going to be even harder that road to winning out. It's not easy because every win you get, you get clear. It's one player who is even closer and more skilled because you're at a higher match point record. You have more points now, you have a better record, and the competition is going to get fiercer and fiercer. But congratulations to both players. That was an excellent game to watch. It was an excellent game to see. We got to see that big rapid strike tentacles for 330 damage there yes, at the end. Yes, It's powerful, man. A single energy attack for 330 damage. We don't get to see this a lot in the history of the Pokemon trading card game. Very strong attack on that Malamar, really built around all the other powerful rapid strike searching cards, the other support that that rapid strike battle style has available to it. Malamar is a great example of how to take advantage of that. So we got to see both of these decks play out. Which one would you say you're more of a fan of? The, the VMAX or do you kind of lean more towards the Rapid Strike Squids? I like the VMAX. Yeah? I think I think Malamar VMAX is a very powerful card. I think Hand Disruption has always been solid in the Pokemon trading card game. Definitely. I, I think Malamar V, or this the baby Malamar, the Rapid Strike Malamar, mm -hmm. feels it can be a little more risky, a little bit more high risk, high reward. Uh, again, needs to find those combination pieces to put together those big knockouts. With the Arceus V-Star engine, it's very simple. You just attack, you disrupt, you play your supporter cards. It's nothing un, un crazy to find, uh, but in the end, if you, if you take both decks at their peaks and how they're drawing, nothing, it feels like, can beat Malamar, a Rapid Strike Malamar, when it's drawing everything. The only deck that I could possibly think of would be Rapid Strike Urshifu. I know that sure. matchup is, is yeah. very difficult G -Max, from what I've heard. Flow, and Jolteon yeah. as well. Just anything with a spread element to it. Rapid Strike Malamar cowers its spread. It does not want to see any of those things. I'm also a big fan of the VMAX. I've actually played quite a few different decks with that card over the years, ever since Rebel Clash came out. And I'm really excited to see what could happen in the next set. Astral Radiance is bringing back an old favorite with the Dark Patch, which I think opens up a lot of potential for Malamar VMAX. And and the new Roxanne supporter. There's a lot of potential for a disruption type deck around Malamar VMAX. Yeah, we've seen how powerful these patch and saucer cards have been in their respective formats. I know uh, Darkrai EX back with Dark Patch was a menace. Uh, even took down won a world championship. Yeah, yeah, won 2013 world championships. So uh, this card is solid indeed, and I'm sure it will see play. We even have, again, that Hisuian Samurott coming out that yep. can benefit off of that Dark Patch as well. So there's a lot of exciting pieces that we have to work with. Every time we get a new set, I feel like I'm a kid in a candy store, right? <laughs> there's so many awesome pieces we I get to work with. I love experimenting with the and new 
new the, cards. When, whenever, yeah, whenever they reveal new pieces, I'm like, oh, and I, I, I go through PTCGO and I'll, I'll look through the cards we already have yeah, and I'll be absolutely. like, oh, look at that. That works great. I'm going to try that out. It's honestly so enjoyable. I love playing with the new cards and trying to make all the new game mechanics work, the new like different decks that are obviously meant to work well together that come out in a set. But I also love going back and looking at what older cards get a little bit of a buff, and Malamar V Max being a great example, one that got a big buff with the Brilliant Stars expansion, thanks to Arceus V Star, and one that could get a bigger buff with Astral Radiance coming out very soon. I'm excited for this next expansion. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it is going to be exciting. I feel like every time, especially with this last set, brought so much to the meta game with how powerful Arceus V Star was. And the more V Star powers we get, the more Pokemon we have options to, the more the, the doors open, right? The floodgates start to expand, and we get all these different archetypes and metas. And a diverse meta, in my mind, is a great meta. Well, we're going to take a short break. We will have a round 11 match very, very soon. Lots of players still finishing up their games, so we'll be back very shortly. Don't go anywhere.